I'm going to ask Darlene to come help me with the Word of God this morning. Is that okay with you guys? Is that okay with you guys for Darlene to come? All right. And then we're going to get rid of Darlene. She's going to go help um, Rihanna and um, Brenda. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, no problem. What, 11 to 19? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, he told me that um, while I was out there, yep, you're going to read this morning. Or I could take a poll. So, <sighs> now on his, uh, we're, I'm sorry, we're reading from Luke chapter 17, 11 through 19. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, raise and go. Your faith has, been made, has made you well. Thank you so much. Now we get to get rid of you and you, get, you, go, you go help the, the, the youth. Amen. How about a round of applause for Darlene? She did so awesome. Have you ever heard of um, Best Kept Secret? I'm so grateful for our um, artists who can do this so awesomely, Rihanna. Amen. Over the next couple of weeks, I want to talk to you about a few best kept secrets. This morning when, when I was contemplating on this message, I wasn't sure that the Lord wanted me to preach this, even though I had it ready. I said, Lord, do you have something else for me? And he just wanted to spend some time with me. How many spend time with the Lord in the morning? Is the best time. And I, I felt like he wanted to give me something else, but he gave me something for Wednesday. In the next few weeks, as we share about these best kept uh, secrets, I want us to focus exactly what we're hiding. Okay? And I know Resurrection Sunday was a few weeks ago, but I'm still excited about Resurrection Sunday. I can't hold back my excitement. I really can't. Why? Because it's about the best kept secret. It's all about Jesus. How can I stay silent about what the Lord has done for me? How can I stay silent about my Jesus? How can you stay silent about your Jesus? You shouldn't. You can't. Tomorrow evening, the Jewish people will start the celebration of the Passover. And yes, our calendars are way off. That's okay. But I'm excited because we know that Jesus is the Lamb of God. We know that Jesus is the one that takes away the sins of the world. So my question, go back to the best kept secret. Why do we keep Jesus the best kept secret? Why do we keep him hidden? So the best kept secret, Jesus, the Passover lamb, he commands us. And this is the vision for 2024. Are you ready for this? Matthew 6, 33. First, seek the kingdom 
and all and its righteousness and all of these things will be given to you. Some of you are still stuck in 2023, but that's a good vision as well. Seek his face. When you seek his face, you seek his kingdom. Somebody, somebody in the back right behind you has a 2024 shirt. Come on, Lisa, show them all. There you go. Praise God. That is awesome. That's an answer miracle right there. We as ct.church, our website, we as the Church of Connecticut have a commandment. We have a command from the Lord to seek his face, but also to first seek his kingdom. To be thankful for his kingdom and to invite others into his kingdom. Amen? And I want to tell you a little story about this man who went to Costco to buy some meat for the ladies' group. Y'all know who I'm talking about, right? And as this man pulled into Costco to get some meat, you won't believe this, but every parking space was taken. I don't know, last week, I've been, I've been to Costco three times, and each time the, par the parking lot was um, uh, completely full. I mean, this, this man pulled into I get this right. It was a Wednesday night, and I was running, running late to church, and I said, Lord, where can I park? Because I got to get back to your people. I got to be ready for your people. And that exact moment... A car pulled out, VIP parking as always. I said, Lord, don't worry about it. I found a space. <laughs> the best kept secret. Now, I want us to go back to our story. Forget about the man at Costco and meat and the rest of it, okay? Let's dive into our story. And as we look at our story, I found a few interesting pieces that I want to bring to you. And the first part is, in verse 11, is that Jesus traveled along the border. Why did Jesus travel along the border? Any ideas? Well, let's just pretend this is the border, okay? Okay. Let's call it no man's land. Could we say that? Is that okay? If I go to this side, I'm in Israel. If I go to this side, I'm in Samaria. So why did Jesus travel the border? Why did Luke, who was a doctor and very particular in the way he wrote things down, why did he mention that Jesus was traveling on the border? Jesus didn't want to take sides. Can I tell you something else? Who lived right there on the border? The outcasts. Those that society did not want to deal with. They lived along the border. Lepers were outcasts. And for your information, they were contagious. And I don't know if you know this, but leprosy is caused by a slow-growing bacteria on the inside that affects the nervous system, affects the skin, affects the eyes, the nose, the mouth. And eventually, the lepers lose feeling in their, in their fingers and, to and toes. I can't pronounce the other word. Extremities, thank you. I didn't want to pronounce it wrong. I don't look foolish anymore for Jesus, amen? And, it, and they lose feeling. And when you lose feeling, what happens? Well, you start to lose extremities. Fingers, toes, arms, legs. And leprosy in the Bible is a picture of sin. Anybody know why? Leprosy is an inward disease. It's on the inside. 
that shows up outwardly. The sores and other problems are just the symptoms of the disease. But the root is down deep inside. Sin is exactly the same way. I don't know if you know this or not. Where does sin start? In the heart, inside, deep, deep inside, where no one can see. And by the time there are outward manifestations of what has happened on the inside, the extremities could have been lost by now. Leprosy is also a repulsive disease. There is a stench about this disease. See, the uncomfortable numbness and aches and wounds that will not heal, eventually all pain goes away. And the lepers cut themselves and burn their flesh without even actually knowing about it. And I, I, I know this is gruesome for some of you, but wait, it gets better. Amen. Jesus. And I don't know if you know this, but sin does the same thing. Sin numbs our consciousness, consciousness. Hopefully I pronounced that right word right. Pray for me, I need Jesus. Sin starts to burn, to cut open wounds, and those wounds won't heal. How many know some sinners who have some wounds that will not heal? How many know believers who, whose wounds will not heal? Leave that alone. Y'all figure this out in a second. And as the skin decays, this beautiful aroma, sorry, this horrendous aroma comes about. And this aroma drives away everyone. And by the way, the people who are in sin, somehow or other, they drive away the Christians. See, the infected person doesn't even realize it, that they need Jesus. See, leprosy was a separating disease. Lepers would quarantine in the camp outside on the border. Because the Israelites don't want them and the Samaritans don't want them because they're contagious. Sin is contagious. The other day I was speaking to one of my friends and we were talking and how everything is being desensitized. The more sin we see on TV, in the movies, the more killings we see in the, on TV and in the movies and YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and Facebook are not immune to these things, Snapchat. The more we see these things, the more we are desensitized to sin. And sin, just like leprosy, separates loved ones. Sometimes we don't want to associate with someone who's in sin because what if they rub off on me? Somebody say, Jesus. See, sin makes us an enemy to God. Just like leprosy would push people away, so sin pushes people away from believers. And here's the crazy part. I'm ready for the crazy part. Lepers cannot heal themselves. Let me say it again. Sinners cannot find Jesus by themselves. There's no remedy, there's no ointment for this disease even in 2024. People who are without Jesus will never find a remedy for sin. Why? Because only Jesus can heal a leper. Only Jesus can save a sinner. Say it with me. Only Jesus. Jesus touches this leper. Jesus touches those sinners. And the lepers become clean and sinners be become sinless. Sinners deserve judgment. 
just like the lepers deserve to be in the colony. Yes, I said it because I'm reading what was happening in 2020, uh, sorry, 2000 years ago, not in, in 2024. Today, we try to find uh, cures. Back then, what they did, they pushed them to the side. They didn't want them. But yet, in the church, in Living Waters included, we sometimes push sinners away because we are afraid because we may gay, get dirty. Yes, sinners deserve God's judgment, but Jesus, say with me, but Jesus touches the sinner. Jesus touches the leper, and they are made clean. They are made whole. They are restored. Verse number 12, Luke chapter, or are we? Yeah, Luke chapter 17, verse number 12. Go ahead, put up 10 fingers. Put up 10 fingers. There you go. It's a good exercise as well. 10 men who had leprosy met Jesus. If Jesus was a good rabbi, you can put your fingers down unless you want to hold them up. It's a great exercise. I see some of you doing exercise. As long as you're not counting them, it's okay. If Jesus was a good rabbi, what would he do? He would some guys, I'm about to curse you to death, okay? That's what we rabbis would do. Think about the, about the Levite and the priest who were traveling down the road and saw a man abandoned, okay? Leprosy was worse. And I don't know if you know this, but God speaks through numbers. Yes, he does. Number 10. Go ahead, put, it, put your 10 fingers up. I got to hold the microphone and put the 10 fingers up. I'll do both, okay? There we go. Luke indicates that there were 10 men who had leprosy. The number 10 indicates God's authority. Number 10 indicates God's completeness. Number 10 indicates God's order. Number 10 indicates God's divine protection. It also indicates tithing, but we, we already had our offering. Think about it for next time. See, Luke was a doctor. He was meticulous at taking down notes just like they were. How many have a medical background? Okay, some of you. Great. For some reason, people who are in medical field memorize these numbers that are useless for, them, for me. Somehow they memorize these uh, medications that I can't even pronounce. And they know wh which one in, uh, interacts with the other, at least the good ones do. See, Luke understood that Jesus had authority. He had authority over the, every disease. He had authority to completely and divinely heal this man. And I believe that Luke wrote this down for us to talk about it today. He knew about it, amen? Jumping down to verse 14, Jesus says to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, say it with me, as they went, say it again, as they went, they were cleansed. <clears throat> How many are glad that Jesus has authority to heal in 2024? Why didn't Jesus heal these men right there on the spot? They needed to obey him. Some of you already know that ugly O word, obedience. See, Jesus did this to show how many people will walk away after receiving a blessing and a band-aid 
for their issues. Priests were like doctors back then. They had the ability, they sorry, they had they had the authority to confirm your healing. Can you imagine these lepers coming to these priests and all of a sudden, right in front of the priest, the leprosy leaves? What a testimony! How many of the priests believed? Very few. You know why? Because seeing is not always believing. Believing is believing. Believing it before you see it, that's faith. Amen? See, when they saw these lepers and saw the healing right in front of them, they might be saved. And listen, I have nothing against the medical profession. I am so grateful for how advanced our, uh, our medical profession is. And now with the advancement of the AI, it's going to help them even more if done right. Amen. But... Jesus is my favorite healer. Say it again. Jesus is my favorite healer. And, and listen, as we speak about Jesus and what Jesus has done for us, people have a choice. They can either believe it and accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. They are without excuse one way or another. Or, or they can walk away. Just like the priest had a choice when they saw the healing, they could either believe, repent, turn to Jesus, or not. And here's the other thing. Jesus is not a lawbreaker. Say it with me. Jesus is not a lawbreaker. Jesus did exactly what is written in the law. If somebody gets healed, what are they supposed to do? Go to the priest. There were nine Jewish men and one foreigner. That's me. I'm a foreigner, just in case you didn't know. Let's read verses 15 and 16 together. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a soft whisper. In a what? Say it again. Loud whisper. Oh, loud voice. How can I mess that up? He threw himself at Jesus' feet. Listen, when you get healed, what happens? You get excited. Why? Because God has made you whole. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a foreigner. And he was a Samaritan. Praise God. Listen, say it again with me. Praise God. You got to get loud. Praise God. Get louder. Praise God. Jesus is glorious. He is victorious. Get excited because he is in this house. And it doesn't matter if he was a Samaritan. He was an outcast and an outcast and an outcast. How many of you have ever been an outcast? Just me? Oh, okay, some of you. All right. When you are an outcast, you don't expect any goodness from the master. So when Jesus healed him, he got a new lease on life. When Jesus touched him, he was made whole. See, when Jesus touches sinners, they get a new lease on life. And here's the thing about fresh converts. They cannot keep a secret. Can, I show, can, you, can we show that picture, please? They cannot keep a secret. No, the, the other one. New converts cannot keep a secret. Remember yourself when Jesus touched you, whether he healed your body or when you just got saved. What did you want to do? You want to tell the world. You want to shout loud and get it louder and louder that Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is my healer. I get excited because Jesus 
is the best kept secret of believers. So Jesus asked a question. Verses 17 through 19. Where, where were not all ten cleansed? I had authority to clean to cleanse all ten. Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give God praise except this foreigner? Why did the foreigner come back to thank God? Then he said to the foreigner, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Everyone gets healed. All ten of them get healed. Jesus has the authority to give um, healing to all of them, to heal all of them. But only one, say with me, only one gave, gave thanks. You know why? Best kept secret. The other nine felt entitled. We're Israelites. We're Christians. God has no choice but to heal me. God's going to do it anyways. I've seen him do it in the past. He's going to do it again. And therefore, the nine, those that are entitled, don't share Jesus with others. But can I tell you something very interesting? I found this in my research. You can Google this, by the way. A thankful heart is a happy heart. It's true, true story. A thankful heart is a joyous heart or joyful heart. A thankful heart is a grateful heart. A, health, a thankful heart is an appreciative heart. A thankful heart is a healthy heart. Don't forget Jesus. Don't keep Jesus a secret. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse number 2 says, Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness for these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what's in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments, whether or not you would keep him as a best kept secret. I mean, we've been walking with the Lord for a little while. Most of us. See, when, when things are good, how many have, are, uh, um, for how many people are things good right now? Oh, good. Praise God. When we receive everything God has promised, it is so good. Amen. When you've obtained that, uh, obta obtained that job, when you got the car, when you got the house, what more can you ask for? You're happy. You're content. Amen. And at that moment, it's easy to forget God. It's easy to keep Jesus a secret. It's so easy to be unthankful. It's easy to keep that best, that best kept secret hidden within ourselves. But the world is suffering. Go ahead, point to the world. They are suffering. Can I tell you, there is suffering out there. The world needs the best kept secret that you are hiding. Release to them. Release Jesus to them. They need Jesus. How many have children or had children? How many of us have had to remind our children or for those of you who don't have children, how many times have your parents reminded you to th give thanks when you get a gift? Listen, even as a parent, I remind my children, and some of my children remind me. Mm-hmm. Wait till your children get older. You'll know. Don't forget to say thank you. The other day, um, I got a little gift, and uh, I won't point to my son who's in the sound booth. His name's William. <laughs> but he reminded me, Dad, 
Don't forget to say thank you. True story or not? I've taught him well. Praise God. Look at him. William, true story or not? Tell the rest of the people. <laughs> I'm human. I have a best kept secret. His name is Jesus. And Moses reminds the Israelites, say thank you. When you go home, read Deuteronomy chapter 8. I know it's not a very popular chapter to read, but go ahead and read it anyways. Remember it was God, not you. Just remember that when you read Deuteronomy chapter 8. But I want to read a few verses for you. Verses 17 and 18. Ready for it? Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 17 and 18. You may say to yourself... This is God speaking to his people, to his children. This is God speaking to us, okay? You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he... who gives you the ability... To produce wealth and so confirms his covenant which he swore to your ancestors as it is today who did it god did it and when god does it do we keep it a secret shout it from the mountaintops tell the world that jesus is alive especially in this passover season Why? There's a warning for us. How many ready for the warning? How many ready for the warning? When you get the warning, you got to obey, okay? If you forget, God will send you a son to remind you to say thank you. If you forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed like the nations the Lord destroyed before you. So you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. God is giving us a warning that if we keep the secret a secret, what's going to happen? How will God destroy us? How many want to know? He takes away his hand. He takes away his blessing. And what happens? We're left without nothing. We're left with ourselves. How many know that if you, if you are left to your own desires, you'll destroy yourself? Mm-hmm. Do you know that money doesn't destroy people? Money shows who you are. It shows the heart. Let's just be honest. That's what happens. How many have seen um, documentaries on the, the curse of the lottery? Okay, some of you have seen it. Suggestion, watch it, okay? I'll give you the synopsis real quick. Majority of the people who win the lottery go bankrupt or even worse, commit suicide by year number five. You know why? Because the heart. Is the heart, it's a heart issue. Money is not a problem, but money reveals who you are. Whether you have a lot of it or you have none of it, it doesn't matter. It still reveals the inside of you. Amen? Are we good on that? Let's move on. When Jesus heals the lepers, when Jesus touches the sinners, they must learn to say, thank you. Do they? One did. <laughs> Listen, when people who have walked in darkness see the light and that light changes them, they want to shout it from the mountaintop. When the light of Jesus hits a non believer, a sinful person, they want to shout it from the mountaintop. 
when we when you pray over someone who has not felt the presence of God and they feel the presence of God, when they get healed, what happens? They want to say, oh my God, I want to thank you. I say, no, 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 no. Thank God because it is he who gives me these abilities. I cannot heal you. I'm not a healer, but he is. When God gives me a word of prophecy, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, and people say, oh my God, how'd you know that? I said, he told me. It is not I. It is he. Amen. However, let's talk about the nine. Let's talk about the nine. Let's talk about us. Okay? You're going to say, Pastor, talk about me. The nine. Majority of Christians will not say thank you. Majority of Christians want to keep this best kept secret to themselves. Majority of Christians don't want to talk about Jesus. Do you know why? Because we're entitled. We're saved. We're going to heaven. Why should we share the good news with somebody else? You've been under grace for too long. Amen. You've been in church for too long. You forgot what it was like to be out there. You forgot what it was like to be unsaved. You forgot what it was like to have all the pain and suffering of the world. You forgot. And when things turn good for you, there is an answer. Give thanks to God and share Jesus with others. Say with me, share Jesus with others. How about when you're praying, you're believing, and the answer is no? What happens when the answer is no? Can you still thank God? Can you? I, you know, we don't, we, let's be honest. Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to. But yet, we must. Amen? Being thankful to Jesus. Not keeping him secret. Not keeping him a secret. But sharing Jesus with others is important. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. We like this first part. Rejoice always. Pray continually is a little bit tougher, but okay. This next part. Why did the writer of Thessalonians, to, to the Thessalonian church, why did he have to put this next part? Why? Give thanks in some circumstances. Oh, sorry, in all circumstances. I need to be corrected sometimes. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Listen, I have a reason to thank God when things are good. I have a reason to rejoice when things are good. I have a reason to pray when things are good. I have a reason to give thanks when things are good. However, how can I rejoice when there's so many issues? You just been through it, you know. He's learned. Go on, tell him, tell him, I've learned. Amen. Sometimes God has to teach us the hard way. Why? Just like, just like me, he is stubborn for, for God to work on him. But how many are thankful that God still works? God still speaks. God still moves today. I have so many reasons. I have so many reasons to be thankful to God. I have so many reasons to give him thanks. I have so many reasons to rejoice in the midst of my trials, in the midst of when everything is going the wrong way. Amen. I have a reason, and he is the reason I cannot be silent. Amen. How about when fear and anxiety sets in when, because things aren't going your way? Have anybody of you experienced that before? Like this week, maybe even? Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything. 
but in every situation, regardless of what it looks like, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Oh, church, I am thankful. I cannot be silent because Jesus has made a way. I cannot be silent because Jesus has made a way. Amen? Jesus always makes a way. Have you ever possibly faced backlash from fellow believers? Just me? Oh, okay. Some of you. Let me explain. David goes into battle with his mighty men. They get a victory and a half. Amen. Come on, give God praise. They got a victory. They come home. <laughs> See, some of you have to remember. They come home to find that their house is destroyed. God, I did some work for you. God, I fought the battle for you. God, I did that all for you. Now I come home and my house is destroyed. The men that were him, with him, they were applauding David at that moment. They were taking their swords and applauding David. Or oh, sorry, they were sharpening their swords. Got to get that right. They wanted to thank David, amen, with a little stab in the back. 1 Samuel 30, verse 6 tells us that David was greatly distressed. Why? David, you just had a great victory. You should rely on that past victory. David, why are you so distressed? Because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters and David was bitter with them what what does it say David found strength in the Lord his God you guys got to pay attention more I have the notes but I gotta throw you a curveball make sure you're not falling asleep on me here <laughs> David found strength not in the men that wanted to kill him, not in the men that picked up the stones, not in the men that picked up their swords, but in God. Sometimes when the Christians around you encourage you by telling you to stop, what are you going to do? Lord, I look to you. Son of David. For those of you who missed last week's sermon, go back and listen to it. Have mercy on me. David looked at the son of David. David looked at God for his strength. David could not find strength in himself. The world tells us to find strength in ourselves. How can I find strength in weakness? Think about it. But this is what the world tells us. The world tells us to find strength in ourselves. Why? Because they don't know him. We as Christians have kept a good secret. We as Christians have kept a really good secret. We don't tell the world about Jesus. We're selfish. But Jesus wants to save the world. Amen. David could not rely on his fellow churchgoers. You know why? Because sometimes your fellow churchgoers will drag you down. Amen. Amen. Therefore, sometimes you need to find strength in the Lord. When you find yourself in a difficult situation, do the following. Everybody do this with me. Take a deep breath. <gasps> hold it. Hold it. When you're holding it, it calms you down, by the way. That's a medical thing, right? Go ahead, take, take another breath. <gasps> and hold it. It'll calm you down. Okay? Listen, God has given you so many tools right in your own body, okay? And then, are you ready for the next part? Are we all calm? Good. No, 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 hold it. 
<laughs> I see some of you turning blue now, don't that? <clears throat> now whisper the following words. Thank you, Jesus. Okay? No, no, not too loud. You got to whisper first. All right? Whisper. Thank you, Jesus. It, 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 the steps are important. All right, let's try again. Hold your breath. <gasps> whisper. Thank you, Jesus. Now out loud. Thank you, Jesus. And now, Wayne, louder. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, that is good. How does it feel? You let the best secret out. You said, thank you, Jesus. You let Jesus out. Now go tell the world. Amen. <clears throat> let your thankfulness lead you to action. When you are thankful, the result is gratefulness. You want to shout it from the mountaintops what the Lord has done for you. Gratitude prompts you to act accordingly. I could bring so many other Bible stories. When Jesus healed people, what did they do? They told the world. They told the world. And up to 2024, believers who have been transformed by Jesus have been telling the world. They've been changing the world one person at a time. Whatever it takes, thank you, Jesus. Remember, at the beginning, I told you that a thankful heart is a happy heart. Write this down because this is important. A thankful heart is a joyful heart. A thankful heart is a grateful heart. A thankful heart is an appreciative heart. And a thankful heart is a healthy heart. Amen. See, I'm reminded of a song. I believe this was written by Bill and Gloria Gaither. Look, and it goes like, look what the Lord has done. Sorry, I'm clapping, okay? But I gotta, I'm, there's a beat going on in my head, okay? I'm just letting it out, okay? He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. Come help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. How many of you have heard that song before? All right, majority of you. For the rest of you, come see me after. I'm going to teach you a new song, okay? It might be a little bit off a different beat, but hey, listen. Look what the Lord has done. Jesus. Come on, point to Jesus. Look what the Lord has done. Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful let the message of christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms hymns and songs from the spirit singing to god with gratitude in your heart and whatever you do whether in word or deed do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This weekend, this following weekend, not today. Although you can, I've printed. Jeremy, can you get the uh, printouts that I printed out? This, next, this coming up weekend, April 27th, we have a great opportunity to tell others about Jesus. I think I printed enough for you guys for today. I'll go print more if I need to, okay? Mackenzie, come here. Can you hand these out to anybody who wants them? And tell them, pastor will print more. Take as many as they want, okay? I'll cut them up the way you want them. You want them bigger, I'll make them bigger. Whatever you want, whatever you want I'll make it work. April 27th, Saturday. Men, we have a breakfast in the morning. We're going to feed you. Tom's going to cook for you. It's going to be a good word. And then in the afternoon, we have the privilege of going with other churches that are coming to, to us to Living Waters. 
I have other pastors that are coming here to Living Waters. We're going to pray together, and we're going to go hand out these. You can you get a head start today, okay? And it's an invitation to our event. We're going to put up a tent on 3rd, 4th, and 5th. May 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Why are we doing this? We don't want to keep secrets. We want to tell the world, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind just in time. Yesterday, today, and forever, He's the same. And I understand that some of us are looking, you really going to make me do this? No. If you don't want to go, don't go. I know some of you got a play to go to. Bless you. Take some flyers with you and hand them out. Because I guarantee you, 90% of the people there don't know Jesus. So you get to be the evangelist at the play. You get a captive audience. Woo! I'll give you a stack that big if you want. Come on. Jesus will get the glory one way or another. Jesus will get the glory one way or another. We're going to cook some hamburgers and some hot dogs. We're going to throw a party. And we'll be kind because his kindness leads us to repentance. Amen. So as I finish my sermon this morning, what has God done for you? What has Jesus done for you? Some of you saw the video earlier of Angie dancing with her son. Just like God said, what has God, what has God done for you? One of uh, our presidents once said, "Ask not what your God can do for you; ask what you can do for your God." It's so much better this way. Puts a new understanding on that on that um, on that saying, right? What has God done for you? Tell somebody. Look what the Lord has done. Amen.